Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for June 26th, 2023. I'm teaching a series on the parables of Jesus. We did a series for five months on the miracles of Jesus, and it was amazing. I'm talking about it built people's faith up to the point where they could believe God for anything. Say, I believe God for anything. Well, we, you believe, like you, you can see the invisible. Believe God for the impossible, that no matter what you're facing, you will never be overtaken. No matter what you're facing, you're never distraught. You're never in despair. You are never uh, hopeless because you were never helpless. God is on you, in you, with you, and for you, God can do all things. Now we're doing a series on the parables of Jesus. And this is the first parable. I have a lot more to go. I probably need to speed this up, but I like to take my time. We break things down. We're in part 19 of this series already, and we're just dealing with one parable so far, and it's the parable of the sower. And so we're going back to that parable again today. I call it the mother of all parables. And the title of today's message is Pearls from the Parables, part 19. The title is Your Heart Does Not Discriminate. We're going to talk about the fact that, listen, your heart, Jesus likened your heart to soil, and whatever you put down in your heart, your heart is going to crack that thing open and make it grow. Your heart does not discriminate. Get ready. to. Re- this is going to be good. Get ready for the word. All right. So listen, I'm excited about this message. Before we actually get into the message, uh, let me share a scripture with you that I've been uh, meditating on, that we've been meditating on all year. This is a scripture that our church is, is, was given from the Lord for this year, for this season, that this is a season of refreshing and restoring for us. This is what the Bible says in Psalms 126 and verse four. Now, Lord, do it again. Restore us to the former glory. May the Lord restore us unto the former. There was a former glory for many people. Many people lost something along the way, but this is a season where the Lord will restore it and, and help us to get it back. Say, Lord, restore me right? This is a season of refreshing and restoring for us. The the text says, may streams of your refreshing flow over us until dry hearts are drenched again. What we want is if if you ever, while you're walking with God, if you ever get to the point where there's an area of your life that's dried up, then what you want is to spend time with the Holy Spirit so he can drench you again. I'm talking about fresh wind, a fresh fire, a fresh anointing. Say, Lord, do it again. Let Lord do it again for me. All right. So we've been looking at the mother of all parables. Let me just say this real quick. As I was thinking about, I mentioned Brandy, that Brandy's been getting today's word um, since uh, in the in the pre, you know, uh, in the live stream. I mentioned Brandy, and uh, Brandy has been getting today's word since the '90s. And so I, w- I want to think about this for a minute. Now I've been doing today's word for 25 years, right? But for, for those of you that, that started on today's word like a year ago or two years ago, five years ago, and you're getting like this word every day and it causes, I hope that it helps you because the goal of today's word is not, you know, this 25, 30 minutes is for you to leave and then keep meditating on the word of God and for the word of God to change the way you think, the way you feel, the way you make decisions. So if you meditate and meditate on God's word and you do it pretty much every day and you do it for years then that type of investment is going to make the condition of your heart conducive to what God wants to do in your life. However, if you don't and you take on the cares of this world, the love of money and selfish desires, then it's so easy for you to be somebody that goes to church, but is not growing because there's too much stuff growing in your heart. That's actually what we're talking about today. So this is the parable of the sower. This is Jesus's explanation of the parable. This is what he said. The farmer is like someone who takes the word of God. So God is the farmer in the story. The seed is the word of God in the story. We are the soil in the story. He says, now, sometimes the seed falls along the path, and that's like the people that hear the word of God, but they don't understand it. And because they don't understand it, they're susceptible to Satan, and Satan comes immediately and snatches away the word that was sown in their heart. Other people are like seed that's planted on the rocky ground. These are the people that hear the word of God. They they quickly and gladly accept it. You know, they say amen. They, they, they give uh, mental assent to the word of God. They're quick to say amen. They're quick to write things down. They might even be real loud in church with their amens, but they do not allow the word of God to go deep into their lives. And as a result, as soon as trouble comes, the persecution comes because of the word, then they're quick to give up. Now, other people are like seed that's planted amongst the thorny weeds. Uh Uh-oh. 
What do these people do? Well, they hear the teaching, but their lives have become full of other things. What are the other things? Well, the cares of this world, the love of money, and everything else they want, selfish desires. And these other things grow up like weeds, and the weeds choke out the word. And so they're feeding the weeds more than they're feeding the word. And so the weeds choke out the word, and the word doesn't, doesn't work. Other people are like good ground. And, and what happens with the good ground? Well, the good ground, they hear the teaching, they accept it. And it produces a harvest sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, and sometimes 100 times more. So once again, I'm dealing with this, this thorny ground that these are the people that have allowed their lives to become full of other things, and they have competing priorities. Now, in their heart, the word is there, but in their heart, the weeds are there. And so what the analogy that Jesus gives us is that our hearts are like soil. Put in the chat, say, my heart is like soil. So this is the picture Jesus is giving us. The word is like seed. He is like a sower and our hearts are like soil. And the soil that's in our hearts is so fertile that it will cause whatever is sown into it to grow. The point that I'm making today is that the soil in our heart does not discriminate. Whatever you sow down into the soil of your heart, the soil of your heart is going to cause it to grow. So what does this mean for you today? You ready? I said all that to set it up. I have several things to share with you in this morning. I believe eight or nine things. I want to give these to you now. This is where I need you to receive. Say, I'm ready to receive. You ready? All right, number one. Let's break this down. Let's say that you own a beautiful orange grove. Picture an orange grove. You ever been to Florida? You ever seen that or at least seen it on TV? So you own an orange grove. It's beautiful. As far as you can see, I mean, your trees are lined up real pretty and everything, and there's oranges as far as you can see, right? So you own an orange grove. But for whatever reason, one day you decide to sow apple seeds into this orange grove. So you have a piece of land, you till it out inside of the grove, and in that grove, you decide right next to the oranges to sow apple seeds. Now, what do you think the soil is going to do? Do you think the soil is going to say, hey, time out. Time out, boss. Mm -mm. I produce oranges. <laughs> like, don't be putting no apples up in here. No, 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 no. I produce oranges. I don't want to produce apples. I produce oranges. No, the soil is not going to do that. Why? Because the soil does not discriminate. If you sow apples into an orange grove, guess what it's going to produce? It's going to produce apples. And before long, you're going to have apples growing right alongside of the oranges. So if you sow something that you do not want, you're going to produce something that you would rather not have. This is not rocket science, right? Jesus is, is saying, okay, how do I explain the things of God? How do I explain the kingdom? How do I explain the, the word and how the word works? Let me break it down in a way that people can understand. Let me give you this analogy of a farmer because people understand this. And so let me explain. Just as the soil of the earth is designed to take whatever seeds you sow into it, crack that thing open and make it grow, your heart functions the same way. Say that. Say my heart functions the same way. Your heart does not discriminate. Your heart doesn't say, oh no, I'm only going to produce godly things. No, your heart is going to produce whatever you sow into it. So your, your heart is going to receive whatever you sow into it and whatever seed you put down in there, your heart is designed to crack that thing open and make it grow. So it is critical, crucial for you and I to be mindful of the seeds that we're sowing down into our heart because whatever we sow down into our heart is going to come out. <laughs> Whatever we sow down into our heart is going to come out. And so if we sow stuff into our heart that does not align with the will of God or his plans or his purposes for us, then watch this, then those things are going to grow right next to the stuff that we want to grow. And whichever one you feed more is going to grow more. And if you feed this one more, it's going to choke out the word, right? So it's not a mystery. Number two, all soil knows how to do is crack open the seeds and produce whatever you put into it. So Here's something that Christians do all the time, and I don't get it. Christians, going back to the orange grove analogy, have a beautiful orange grove. Their life is full of oranges, and they're happy. But then 
they make decisions and they watch stuff they shouldn't watch, they hear stuff they shouldn't hear, they connect with people they shouldn't connect with. And before you know it, they're sowing those apple seeds. And now they sow apple seeds, they make bad decisions, they sow things they didn't want, and then they pray for the seeds not to work. They, they sow apple seeds and then they pray for God to still give them oranges. And God is like, that's not how it works. I mean, so Galatians 6 says, hey guys, I want to be very clear about something. The apostle Paul, Paul says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You can't sow apple seeds and then pray, oh God, oh God, oh God, please give me some oranges. No, it, the soil does not discriminate. It, it, it simply receives whatever you sow into it, cracks that thing open and causes it to grow. So this is the picture of what Jesus has given us about life and the word and our hearts and all of that. And so he's saying that your heart is going to produce whatever you sow down into it. So if you sow the cares of this world, if you're glued to the television and news, you're just flipping through all the news. Oh my God, the sky is falling, right? If you know more about that submarine that went down or the ship and all of that than God's word, and, and all you're doing is just meditating and all of this stuff on the world, and you're not meditating on the word and you have the cares of this world or the love of money. And so all you know, all, your life is all about that paper. I got to make that paper and you'll do anything to go get that paper and you will do things that are unscrupulous and, and you will do things that are conniving and backbiting and, 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 and if somebody else is cheating on their taxes, you cheat on your taxes and you'll fill out a PPP loan and you'll do stuff and you're lying on stuff and you're lying to the government. But then you, oh God, please, 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 don't let me get caught. No, stop. You can't sow apples and then pray for oranges. Like, I mean, that's not how it works. You, you take If you take the cares of this world the love of money and lust for other things and selfish desires. And you make your life all about that. And you make your life about that instead of the things of God. Then, But then you pray, oh God, but this is what, but, but Lord, I still want you to do this for me. Paul is like, that's not how it works. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. Just as the soil has the innate ability to crack open the seed and bring forth whatever you put in there, listen, your heart is, you have to be intentional about what you sow in your heart. Now, let me be clear about something. If you sow bad seed, you're going to get a bad harvest. That doesn't mean God doesn't love you. That doesn't mean God doesn't still have plans for you. That doesn't mean that you're disqualified. No, it just means that you made dumb decisions. So if you, if you sow bad seed, listen, let me say it this way. You're born again. You're going to heaven. Sin may not unravel your righteousness. If you make a bad decision or you sin, living in sin is not going to make God's grace of null effect. You're still going to go to heaven. Sin may not unravel your righteousness, but let's be clear about something. Sin will unravel your life. So you can't be married, have a chick on the side and talk about, oh God, but please, but please, <laughs> you sow bad seed you're going to get a bad harvest. This is not rocket science. You know what I'm saying? You can't have competing priorities down in your heart, like the cares of this world, the love of money and selfish desires, and then think that the word is still going to work. Number three, if you don't like the harvest that you've been reaping, it's time to check the seed that you've been sowing. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? If you look at your life, and you say, Brother Pena, oh my God, I don't like where I am. Like, you know, there's people that come to me, and, Brother Pena, can I talk to you for a minute? Yes. Oh my God, my, my life is a mess. It's, you know, it's, it, you know, uh, I, it's, I'm going through this and I'm going through that. I, I, I can't deal with this and I can't deal with that. I, 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 I'm just not good at this and I'm not good at that. I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I, just stop talking like that, you know? But the thing is that the reason why they talk like that is because they've sown so many negative seeds already. You cannot sow one thing and then pray for a different result. The only way to change the harvest is to change the seed. So, so your current, let me say it this way, your current harvest today, this Monday, your current harvest is a direct reflection of the seeds that you've sown in the past. Okay, so today is June 26, 2023. Today, I will reap, you will reap whatever we have sown in the past. So whatever we 
are experiencing today is a direct result of the seeds of yesterday. Now, if you don't like the outcome, then you have to change the seed. It's not that, this is not hard to understand. So, so if you don't like where your life is right now, now, if you do like it, oh my God, Brother Pena, oh my God, my God is so good, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. God is so good. This is happening. This oh, Whatever you're doing is working. Keep sowing those seeds. But if you don't like where you are right now, all you have to do to change the harvest is change the seed. If you change the seed, now it may not happen over, overnight, but it's going to happen. So you, you should not, let me say it this way. You should not expect a harvest of peace and joy and abundance if you're one of those people that sowed seeds of negativity and doubt and disobedience, you're going to reap what you sow. I know people that are just messy. You could be born again and just be messy. I know people that are messy, that are conniving, that are always talking about people, that are just nasty, that, are, that always have people's name in their mouth, and they just cause discord, and they're sowing seeds of discord, and then they're amazed at why their life is all messed up. They're amazed at why their life, in their life, uh, they never have peace. And, and they, 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 they just have discontent with all, all these, and they have arguments, and, and they can't get along with this person. And right now, and as soon as they talk to you, they're talking about somebody else. And I'm like, don't be talking to me, because I know, obviously, as soon as you get on the phone with somebody else, you're going to be talking about me. And so these are people, you can't sow seeds of discord and think your life is going to be full of peace and joy. <laughs> That's not how it works. So whatever you are experiencing today is a result of the seeds that you sowed yesterday. Number four, Jesus likened your heart to soil in this parable. And then he painted a picture of the soil in your heart, receiving the seed of the word, cracking it open, boom, and producing the harvest if you allow it to. If left alone, say this, put in the chat, I will leave the word alone. If you leave the word alone, man, that thing is gonna work. But if you don't leave it alone, and while the seed is while the seed of God's word is trying to grow, you start sowing other seed, the cares of this world, the love of money, selfish desires. Uh oh. Now while this one is trying to grow, these other things are growing. And in this case, Jesus said, the competing priorities choke out the word and keep it from producing. And so at, at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to get the word down in your heart and leave it alone. Don't fill it with other things. Number five, your heart has the power to nurture and bring to life whatever is sown into it. Put the, Say this out loud. Whatever I sow into my heart is going to produce a harvest. So it is essential, therefore, that you be purposeful, diligent, very intentful about whatever you allow to get sown down in your heart. Proverbs 4 and verse 23, this is what the Bible says. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it, your heart flows the issues of, your, of life. Your, your whole life is flowing out of your heart. So you got to guard your heart with all diligence. You got to say this, say it out loud, put it in the chat. I protect my heart. You need to shield your heart. You need to protect your heart. You can't, you can't watch everything. You can't, you can't listen to everything. You, you can't connect with everybody. You can't do it. Why? Because I'm guarding my heart. No, 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 no. I got to guard my heart from that stuff. Number six, the condition of your heart plays a vital role in the quality of the harvest that you get to experience in this world. If you fill your heart with distractions and worry and worldly desires, then the word of God might take root, but it's not going to bear fruit. But if you cultivate a heart that is receptive to God, surrendered on him, meditating on him. Then now your heart is going to allow the word to flourish. And so you, you have a heart, say this, say, I have a heart that is not burdened by worries or distractions or stress. No, I have a, a heart that is free. I am guarding my heart. I'm renewing my mind. I'm meditating and medicating on God's word day and night. What's going to happen now? My heart, the word is going to work in my heart and I'm going to grow spiritually. I'm, God is going to release divine provision. I'm going to walk in a level of satisfaction and contentment. I'm going to have joy. I'm going to get up every morning with a spring in my step and a song in my heart and a smile on my face. And I know that my calling is calling me. Why? Because my heart is full of God's word. Number seven, recognize the importance of cultivating a heart that is free from competing priorities or competing influences. You got to make a conscious effort to uproot, say that, 
Say, I uproot fear. I uproot doubt. I uproot unbelief. I, I'm, I'm giving the word of God first place in my heart. Said another way, if you cultivate a fruitful heart and you remove competing influences, then the word of God that's down in your heart is going to produce an amazing harvest and you will be the man or the woman that God called you to be. Number eight, be mindful of the influences that you allow into your life, like media, like what you listen to, like what you watch, like who you connect with, the relationships, the information that you consume. Your eyes, I've told you this many times, I'm going to repeat it today. Your eyes are a gate. Whatever gets through your eye gate will get down in your heart. Your ears are a gate. Whatever gets through your ear gate will get down in your heart. And what is in you abundantly is going to come out of you eventually, right? And consistently. So when people interact with you, they know what you've been looking at. When people interact with you, they know what you've been watching. Why? Because it's coming out of your mouth. And so faith has a language. I can hear faith. I can hear the language of faith. When I'm talking to people, I know what they've been listening to. I know what they've been watching. So number nine, and finally, as I close, the soil of your heart is precious. So you got to guard it diligently. Just as a gardener is out there pulling out weeds, a gardener is like spraying it down, putting, trying to get uh, uh, pesticides and all of that stuff, making sure that, that anything that's going to stop the, the harvest from coming, remove that stuff. You got to surround yourself with positive people. You got to surround yourself with people of like precious faith. You got to have edifying influences. You got to align with the word of God. You got to intentionally, intentionally limit your exposure to things that are not like God. You don't want to watch stuff. Like if I hear somebody saying, oh man, this is my life is all messed up. Oh man, you know, I'm never going to, I'm just not good at this. I'm not good at, I know what they've been listening to. I know what they've been thinking about, right? But but see, I, I can't talk like that. And the reason why my output, my, my lips can't talk like that. My lips will never say something like that coming out because I don't allow that to come in. And so what am I listening to? I'm a king's kid. That's what I listen to. I'm a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. Uh oh, I'm a peculiar people. Uh oh, I'm a chosen generation. I I'm the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I'm the winner and not the loser. I'm the victor and never the victim. Why is that coming out? Because that's what went in. And so, so the only way it's going to come out is if you allow it to go in and then rid yourself of competing influences. That's enough for today. But in closing, let me just tell you this. And I'm preaching better than you saying amen in the chat, by the way. But let me just close by saying this. If you feed your heart with fear and doubt and unbelief and selfish desires, there's going to be too much going on in the soil of your heart for the word to work. The weeds in your heart will choke out the word and your life will produce a harvest. That's not what God wanted. And the sad part is that God will not stop it. Look at me as I close. I want you to really pay attention to this. God will not stop it. God will not stop you. God, if you sow negative seed, you're going to reap a negative harvest and God is not going to stop it. God loves you. God, God has plans for you. But if you choose to choke out the word, with the cares of this world, the love of money, selfish desires, other things, God will stand by as you ruin your life. He loves you, but he will allow whatever you allow. He loves you, but he will permit whatever you permit. Your life is today where you are right now because of the decisions that you made in the past. And God will be like, look, son, daughter, I want you to do better. I want you to, to reap better, but you got to sow better. You got to make better decisions. You got to meditate and medicate. So if you guard your heart, yes, you're going to reap an amazing harvest. If you don't, you won't because the soil of your heart does not discriminate. Whatever you sow into it is going to grow. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. Oh, that was good, y'all. You, you might need to listen to this again. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of refreshing and restoring for me. I am intentional about the seeds I sow into my heart. I align my heart with your word, Father, and your purposes for me. I sow seeds of faith, love, and obedience. I reject competing seeds like the kids of this world and selfish desires. I change the seed in order to change the harvest. I examine and align 
anything that I allow to go into my heart with your word, your will, and your ways. I guard my heart with all diligence. I uproot fear, doubt, and unbelief. I am mindful of the influences that I allow, and I choose positive and edifying ones. I cultivate a receptive, surrendered, and focused heart. My heart meditates on you. I remove competing priorities. I remove anything that's not like you. I fill my heart with good things. So I am empowered to speak life and faith and encouragement. My heart is full of your word. Therefore, my life produces a harvest that will bring glory to your name. Greater is coming for me because I live for you and you alone. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow I'm going to have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, then please go to todaysword.org. Click on the big red subscribe button. You're going to get all, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. You get the notes for free, so why not sign up? So listen, I love you. God loves you more. If you don't have my latest book, please get that book or get any of those books. Go to rickpina.co. Check this out. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. And then share this message right now. This is something people need to hear. Share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day. The best is yet to come. All right, I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program and Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material, and there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.